Hello again, my friends, and another video so soon, you might think. Yes, uh, I figured I'd, you know, I owe you all another video uh, and to post a little bit more frequently, which, you know, I really want to own up to. So here is a Tiger 2 from Ravel in 172nd. You can already see that I picked up this kit from my local hobby shop for $25. You know, that's US dollars if, you know, some of you are, don't even know where I'm from. And it's, I think it's a reasonably well priced kit. Uh, coming from the early 2000s, uh, I believe, and it's, well, is it up to the price? Uh, in some ways it is, but I think in its simplicity and its build, uh, I think it's pretty worth it. You know, uh, it's compared to more modern kits in 172nd, say like uh, Svezda, for example, it's, it's probably, you know, not something that it would be as worth, you know, compared to a, a Svezda Tiger 2. Which, you know, really it might just be a, a, a better model overall. But this one was still pretty nice to build. And I didn't have much issues. And only except for the most tricky part was the tracks. And thankfully, there weren't horrible rubber tracks, you know, that are too short. And basically you need uh, an incredibly strong super glue to fit them back together. So, yeah. And also, this is a model kit that I no longer own. Or a model that I was I gifted to my friend for his birthday. So if you're watching this dude, I hope you're still enjoying it. And really, uh, it's it was just so much fun to build this and paint this. And spoilers, I do actually have another Tiger 2, but it's actually from Dragon. And yes, it is in 172nd. And but it came with more than just the Tiger 2. But that's another video for the future. And what well, most of you are actually might be familiar with this kit from Plasmo. You know, Plasmo uh, built this kit and painted it in the winter wash camo scheme. You know, the tricolors and just the winter wash over the top of it. Uh, but with it being he very heavily chipped and uh, weathered. Uh, in, in words of, you know, just the white being mostly gone. Which I think came out excellently. And really for this one, it's this one. Is going to be a Tiger 2 uh, Slaw 16 Premium from War Thunder. If you know what I'm talking about, it's that color scheme of a deep uh, flat green or rich green color with you know dark yellow stripes and red brown over the top of them. And the dark yellow stripes being you know mostly very thin. And that's what I want to aim for for this model kit. But I think in comparison, uh, mine is a little bit more vibrant and rich in tone. Well, you know, in game it's more heavily weathered than chipped, albeit, but it's a little bit more desaturated, which you know, which is fine. And if you do want to follow me on this color scheme, uh, you know, to each his own. Do you want it look to look more vibrant and colorful, or a little bit more, uh, you know, desaturated and muted in tone? But I think all in all, in, in most parts of the model, I think I reached achieved that, and you know, the color scheme, and I was pretty satisfied with it and how it came out. And well, with building this model, it was very simple and basic. Uh, I recommend this kit for anyone you know, who's at least up to my level, you know, which is a complete noob. You know, I'm not so good at it you know, when it comes to building, so I, I, I recommend it to anybody. And personally, I think you'd enjoy, you would enjoy building this kit. And I, f mainly for the tracks when you see later on, I, I hope they'll help you. And now on the sanding, I'm sanding on the fenders here, so just with a very heavily uh, sanding grit, maybe 100 to at least uh, 90, I believe. And it's very effective for just uh, getting rid of that excess plastic. And make sure it is wet, because if it's not wet, then you're going to build up a lot of dust, and it'll be hard to clean. And now you can see the one on the left is thin and heavily sanded down, and compared to the one on the right, which is still you know pretty thick. And I'd say it's close enough to that uh, very thin uh, fender uh, look to it. And as you're also about to see me here, uh, use a very you know, brand new sharp tip hobby knife to make tiny little holes. I don't actually have a pin vise that has a small enough uh, tip end to it to make those holes. And even then, I, I just had to do this with my hobby knife and probably risk chipping the end of it which you know which is fine i have other uh knives to replace it 
And if you do have this, then uh, I recommend that you just be very slow and careful. Don't try and forcefully push down on the plastic. Otherwise you create an even bigger hole and it just won't look good. And you also, you'd have to refill it back up, which I've done before. So yeah, I, it's, I don't recommend it. It's, it's not fun. But here I'm just using a small little plastic bit or a toothpick and really, and you can just use a thin piece of wire for your super glue uh, application just to make it a little bit more precise. Uh, unless you're better at me than, at this than, than I am, then uh, go ahead and use a toothpick and I'm sure you'll be more precise than I am. But I'm just using some thin wire here, which is at least 0.2 millimeter or maybe 0.5. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I just grabbed any wire that, you know, is thin enough for uh, at this scale in once every second. And now on for the tracks. The tracks, well, well you might be thinking, why, is, why are there other gray tracks rather than the light brown color? Well, that's because those track spur tracks come from them, the Tiger 2 kit I mentioned earlier. And yeah, the Tiger 2 tracks well, came in a plentiful amount, so I might as well use them because, you know, the Tiger 2 Premium in-game has a ton of spare tracks on the sides of the turret. And I think actually it looks pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's not really not much of a noticeable difference compared to the Dragon uh, tracks, but uh, maybe they're slightly bigger or a little bit more detailed, but I think all in all they came out great. And now just for a quick little uh, oxide red priming from Tamiya. I thought it was a beautiful day to spray outside, so I took them out to a slightly overcast and yeah, uh, I don't have to worry about smelling horrible fumes and breathing in paint particles in some, inside my house. And you know, uh, if you do happen to spray paint inside your house or wherever you, know, you live, make sure it's well ventilated and so you don't have to breathe in this stuff. You know, it's like breathing in uh, harsh chemicals and over time, you know, it's not really good for your lungs. So I would recommend, you know, if you have a respirator or a mask, then I would go for it. And now on to the base coat. The base coat is going to be flat green and chocolate brown, both mixed in in equal parts. You'll see here, I'm not trying to be accurate or precise on the amount. I'm just making sure that the paints are mixed to my desire. And he, I really, I think you can just mix this in to also use as a NATO green color, you know, as a very deep, rich, vibrant tone, which I love about this green color. And I think it just came out excellently uh, for my taste. But if you think it's a little bit too much of a deep, rich, deep green, then maybe add a little bit of gray to it to uh, desaturate it. And of course, I'm making sure even though the paint is thinned and we're putting it up in nice thin layers, uh, you really want to make sure you don't flood the surface, otherwise you'll get really deep crevices in other areas that have built up thick paint, which, you know, is undesirable, really, and you don't want that. And you can see that it came out really nice. I, I'm really happy with and satisfied with the deep, rich green tone, and uh, maybe some of you are, are as well, you know, might agree with me there too. And I even, you know, maybe uh, went a little bit far ahead. Uh, of the video pretty much of just testing out the camel scheme on the front of the hole and just you know testing out the chipping as well as uh, the colors which you know I think came out really nicely and also some pre-weathering uh, mainly you know basically early weathering as you know I would basically like to call it because I'm eventually going to put on the suspension afterwards in which this makes it you know very helpful for just painting it on and also weathering because I'm not going to be able to really reach inside behind the suspension. Even though most of it will be covered, if you don't plan on painting the lower hull and, you know, or at least weathering it, just paint it a very dark brown or black. Because, uh, you know, again, the fenders and the suspension will just cover up most of it. But, you know, this is just for that good feeling, of course. You know, it's very fun and satisfying to uh, weather your models. Now to some uh, Northern Europe dark mud, uh, just any kind of color of dark mud really, again from Life Color from their mud set, uh, which is nice. I, I do recommend that you pick up. You know, right? it's acrylic uh, water based, I believe, and you know works the same just as Vallejo paints, and it's just a very nice uh, gloss colored uh, paint. 
this is why I, I went for it. But remember, you do have to build up the effect. It's not going to be 100% instant, uh, you know, glossy. Maybe in some areas it will, but again, just build up the effect to build up that nice, dark, glossy tone. And now to on to the dark yellow color, which it's, you know, doesn't have to be crazy, if anything. It's just uh, a light sand color. Mine is a little bit more yellow, you know, in tone, but uh, it's just the color tone I was going for. And just for that nice vibrancy, as I'm doing my best to match the color, same colors that I see from in-game photos, you know, that you can just easily look up online. And just, uh, it's just as simple as this, uh, you know, dark, deep, rich green base coat with dark yellow and saddle brown. And even using the saddle brown color mixed with a little bit of pale brown that you see there. Or you can also even use a small amount of yellow to act as a form as sort of a highlight in some areas or to increase the vibrancy of the color tone. And now on to the spare tracks. I paint them in a dark gray color, or here I just mix in some black brown and black, you know, as a very dark brown color. But it doesn't really matter in the end of which color you choose, as long as it's a dark gray color in tone. And we're gonna be making these look super polished and shiny with, you know, some pencils and some silicone brushes, which, you know, you'll see coming up. But also for the tools and metal bits, we use the uh, light gray color, which, you know, really you can just use a neutral gray. Uh, the light gray is just as a base coat to then eventually be toned down and weathered. And of course using Iraqi sand for the wooden bits on the tools and the gun cleaning tubes uh, there that you see on the side. Now on to the suspension, you can see how, uh, well, first I make a mistake on the suspension of not putting on the right road wheel in the correct way, as you can see. You want to make sure the ones with the longer bits sticking out to be placed in first, and then the shorter ones to be placed in next, you know, as in second. And well, you can see that I'm about to apply it on with some next, uh, some soft uh, Tamiya liquid cement, and making sure not to apply on too much and not too little. I'd, I'd then let it dry for overnight so I can get a nice uh, strong uh, basis so that it doesn't come off, which you know they can easily can. Uh, but real quick, here's how I used a polishing effect for the tracks. You can either use a silicone brush from AK that you saw there, a makeup brush here from the Tamiya weathering set, or you can use your finger, a cotton bud, or just a pencil. You know, many ways in doing it and you pretty much achieve the same effect. Notice on the track how one side is shorter and the other is longer. You want the shorter side to be pointing inwards towards the hole and the longer side to be pointing outwards, of course. And here I'm just using a test fit, you know, little test on the uh, tracks. And you want to use a quick drying cement like the one we used earlier, but this time I'm using a quick setting cement which has a faster drying time. And for the tracks and road wheels, you want them to be aligned properly uh, for the individual bits and pieces that come in the kit, you want them, well, I, at least I like to pre-assemble them, uh, you know, in each, in their own piece, creating a track link, and then applying it onto the track. You can even see here that I'm t testing, test fitting it, uh, the top layer track, and even, you know, dry fitting the main lower hall area, of course. Just making sure that it fits properly for in the future. And here I'm just even bending it which actually you can use a hairdryer or some very warm water or probably even boiling water. But of course, you don't want it to the point of ruining the track. So you have to be quick. But just some ways of if you don't want to risk ruining your track model and just making it look into a horrible mess. And here you can even see the different color of tracks used from the Dragon Kit, 
which you know this was entirely my fault it was not the kid's fault for not giving me enough spare track links it was just for a mistake that i made on the other side for which you no know, i was trying to do what plasmo did and how he assembled his tracks and you can see here that this is well how i assembled mine uh priming it in black and using lead belcher for a nice polishing steel effect you know it's a nice in between of a gunmetal color and then for gluing on the tracks i'm using gravel contacta which is a slower drying time and thick cement which will give just give us enough enough time to apply on the tracks and fit it on uh, but be careful because it may not feel like you have applied on the tracks correctly which you know which is what i thought at first but make sure you do remove a little bit of paint from the connection points otherwise it won't fit on properly but you know you can even use some super glue if you want to. And now for the final stages of weathering effects, I'm again using the same red dry mud color mixed in with a little bit of black and adding it in a random succession. You know, any kind of weathering technique of speckling and just random bits of jabbing. And then for the final effect, I'm using some AK uh, splatter mud, which has a nice, you know, sort of rough texture to it. We can apply on the fenders and at the rear at the back of the hole or maybe around, you know, bits of the, the track and road wheels, if you would want to. And really, uh, as we reach it to the end, uh, again, I want to thank you all so much for watching, for uh, making it this far, and I hope, really hope you've liked the final result as much as I did in painting and building this model. And, I, well, if you want to know my friend's uh, reaction, he loved the model and he absolutely enjoyed it. So... I still hope you're enjoying it out there, dude, as, you know, it means as much to me to building it and, you know, for you collecting it because, you know, this is why we do this hobby. So uh, here's the final presentation of the model. I will see you all later.